It's the end of the year again, and for some of us, it can be a bit of a rough time. Whether it's meeting up with family and friends or hosting some festive shindig, there's going to be a lot of stress. That's where gaming can help. I just want to start by saying this is not me encouraging you to play games non-stop or develop bad habits or addictions. It's just some ways I've found that help me get through tough times with video games. With that out the way, let's get going. The most important thing I need is a safe space where I can relax and just take time away from reality for a while. It could be mood lighting, a cozy blanket, or just wearing pajamas all day. Whatever makes you feel at ease and can give you a break from rushing around or socializing. This will be your spot when things get too much. And whatever you want to do in this space is completely up to you. If you don't have a room to yourself, making a little nest that only you can use works too. Throw a beanbag into the corner, put on your favorite headphones and create an imaginary bubble that you can escape to. Some games you can play while watching a video or listening to music on the side. So your attention is always split. Find a game that has a great story or characters and worlds you enjoy seeing and interacting with. It could be as complex as a JRPG or visual novel, or just focusing on building something amazing in Minecraft. For me, it's Fallout 4 settlement building. If you're trying to keep to a schedule, or you don't want to accidentally get too lost in the game for hours, set an alarm or ask someone to get you when you're needed. The most important thing is taking time out from the real world and relaxing in a game world, even for a short amount of time. If you're worried about finding a AAA game that will get you through, or you don't want a game that will take hours out of your day, sometimes playing the most basic games can really help. Chris from Mako Powered, who helps me with these videos, pointed out Simple puzzle games like Tetris have been clinically found to reduce stress and stress symptoms because of the focus required and the ability to order things in order to solve the puzzle scenario. Dr. Mario works for this as well, but it was specifically tested with Tetris, specifically with people with PTSD. That's actually part of the reason Tetris Effect exists. There's a certain amount of power in having control of things, whether in game or real life. And games like Tetris gives players just that. We may not be able to control the pieces coming down, but we can decide where they go and how to use them for our own benefit later. Hidden object games are also great for this, as you can find so many titles to play for free and they can be gentle yet challenging. Finding certain objects within a scene might seem simple, but you'd be surprised how easy it is to overlook something when there's so many items to sift through. Focusing all your attention in one place for a short amount of time can also help with sporadic negative thoughts or constant worry you might have. Allowing yourself to turn your thoughts towards finding a random object can be a welcome distraction while also giving your brain a little exercise at the same time. Something that always helps me is playing a game I'm already familiar with, where I can wander around and know what's coming up next. This familiarity takes away the lack of control you might be feeling in and out of the game world and puts you back in charge of what you experience. Finding and playing older games that you have nostalgia for can also help. If you have good memories of a game, maybe playing it again will bring you back to happier times or just remind you why you fell in love with the game in the first place. 
This won't be for everyone, so don't force yourself to go back in time. Not all mainstream games are based around holidays or festive seasons, but some do have themed events or put focus on them. If you want to block this out, find a title that has nothing to do with the season, like a horror or puzzle game. Turning your attention away from the time and date can help distract you and treat the days like any other month. It can be hard if your favorite game has a seasonal theme, but it could be a chance for you to explore new titles, even just for one month. If you can't get console games, there are so many to try on your phone for free. Vampire Survivors really sucked me in, and it's one of those just one more try games which you end up playing 50 times over. And it's free on Android and iOS. Don't be afraid to use gaming to help you turn off the stress for a minute. Games are made for escapism and pretending to be somewhere else for a little while. Phone gaming is great for this too, as you probably have your phone within reach most of the time. If you need to take time out to reboot and recharge, tell someone and go find a quiet spot. This could be five minutes at work or an hour between festive planning. Your mental health is important and pushing through situations when you don't have the emotional capacity can really take a toll. Allow yourself to be present with whatever you're playing. Be mindful of the game itself and use it to de-stress from that customer who yelled at you for no reason. Nowadays, burnout is being taken more seriously, so asking a manager at work for a time out isn't too weird. It's better than struggling and then making things worse in the long run. I speak from experience. The great thing about online gaming is you can play with friends or meet new people in game. Yeah, there'll always be trolls or people just out to see the world burn, but that's what mute is for. You have complete control over who you socialize with or if you socialize at all. I've played many MMOs by myself and it's quite peaceful just doing my own thing. If you're around people all day and all you want is to be alone, you have the choice to do that. You can also find people outside of the games themselves, like forums or Discord, and talk about gaming or general stuff. It doesn't always have to get personal either. You can share exactly how much information you want without pressure. Talking or interacting with other people whether in person or online, can really help with reframing issues you might have or getting different perspectives on things. The main thing is to not get carried away. Don't use gaming as an excuse to miss family get-togethers or skip work. Don't rely on gaming to fix problems or ignore the outside world. Use it as a coping tool, something you can reach for when things get too much. And always remember to moderate your gaming time. So if you're celebrating something, you're avoiding it completely, or if you're somewhere in the middle, remember to take care of yourself and your brain. Gaming has a bad reputation for being harmful or encouraging violence. But it can actually be a good form of therapy during stressful times. This was fun. Let's do it again sometime. And if you like what you saw, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like down below.